So the beast is ready now to take off. So this is how the setup looks like. I don't know if you can see it, but are you guys ready? I'm nervous. <laughs> Let's do it. My name is Janesh Modi and I make videos about life in Canada. In this video, I'm going to talk about the co-op programs for the general science degree. This is episode number 13. You're watching Talks with Janesh. Let's get started. I have my friend who's here to give you a little bit more of an insight into the co-op programs at Memorial University. I'm Shaz doing mechanical engineering program. This is my second year. So watch this video till then for more info about co-op. Program. You guys already know me, I'm about to start my fourth year in the Computer Science Honors Program. Co-op or Cooperative Education is a program where students get the chance to work in an industry related to their field. Now generally co-ops are structured in such a way that each semester of work is alternated with the semester of study. So if you're studying in your first, uh, say you co for engineering students, uh, work term start from the second year. So your second year, first semester you're studying, then your second year, second semester you're going to be working. And then third semester you're going to be studying. And then fourth semester you're going to be working. That's how it's alternated. But for computer science students, it's not like that. It, they only have one option and it's not mandatory. However, for engineering students, work terms are mandatory. And so for computer science students, they're completely optional. For computer science, the co-op program is getting so much more competitive and crazier every semester. So if you're coming here to do computer science and you want to do uh, the co-op as well, then you need to make sure that you have some really good projects because the projects here students are doing, they're so much more better and they get, they're only getting better every semester. And so first to even get accepted into the co-op program has now become difficult. And then once you get accepted into the co-op program, the struggle of finding the job still lies ahead of you. So make sure that in your free time, you're continuously working on your projects and making sure that your projects are really good. Something that your employers want to see is the projects that you do. So Shaiz, tell us about the engineering program at Memorial University. So engineering program here at Memorial University is recognized worldwide mm -hmm. due to best teaching from professors. They will show you different demonstrations in order to in order for you to learn mm -hmm. uh, really properly. So. Uh, and it has like majority of programs like it has ocean level, it has uh, process, it has mechanical, it has electrical and what else it has computer and let me tell you one thing that if you want to do ocean level you should come uh, to this university for study because that's the only university who got ocean level in the world. Co-op for computer science students can be either 8 months, 12 months or 16 months. What I'm going to do is divide this video into three categories, co-op requirements, admission process, and how to find a job when you do get admission to the co-op program. Every university has different criteria for the co-op admission, but I'm going to tell you the process here at MAN. You must have completed all of your second level courses and two third level courses in order to get the admission. And you must also have remaining 15 credit hours, three of which must be from uh, the computer science course at the end of your work term. I'm going to leave all of the links below in the description so you can check them out. Now besides this, you must also have completed some projects in your own free time. This is what the co-op department is going to look at and decide whether to give you admission into the co-op program or not. Doing voluntary projects is going to show how serious you are in the computer science degree and it's also going to give you a chance to showcase your talent, in particular your coding skills. For me, I did so many uh, projects voluntarily on my own. Uh, I made web applications, I made softwares, I also made uh, mobile applications, I made my portfolio mobile friendly as well. And so these things set me out aside. But I'll tell you honestly, when I was waiting to hear back my results, I was really so anxious, I was so scared, I had good grades. I had done really good projects. So my whole application was strong. I had really good references as well. My work experience was solid. So my, everything was really good, but the only thing I was scared of is there are so many students applying. So who knows, I may, I may get a chance, I may not get a chance. But in the end, when the results did come out, I was accepted and I was so happy, I was jumping with joy. The takeaway message here is that you need to some really good projects and also your grades. Don't underestimate your grades because your grades are what is going to set you aside from other students as well. 70% is the requirement, but a good target is to get 75 or more. 80, 85 is really good. And in terms of your GPA, 3.5 above is wonderful. So Shaya, tell us about the engineering uh, requirements at month. So to get into the engineering program, you need to get at least 80% in maths, mm -hmm. chemistry. Yeah and physics okay so in my case the, i had a problem because i was doing uh, high school as a fsc there mm -hmm. was like federal education that was my board so that's why uh, i find it difficult to get into engineering program 
Okay. That's why I had to come here, do some courses, basic science courses, so to say, like I got 87% average in my first year, and then they. 87%, man. Exactly. Yeah. So after getting 87%, then they said, okay, this guy is like competitive, let's give it uh, a chance to get into uh, the engineering program. So then I got into engineering program. Then it's not easy, like it's not uh, the end of the game. Like after getting into engineering, that's the first step. Like uh, that's the engineering one. So in engineering one, you have like different courses, 11 courses. Then you have to get at least 70% in all the courses, like uh, as an average. Then you'll get your get to decide your major. And wow. then after getting uh, one semester of the major, then you'll get go to the work. Oh. So in the in everything like before the work you need to get at least uh, 60 percent average in order to qualify for it. so the takeaway here is mostly you need to have 60 percent in order to qualify for the work term and so the 60 percent on the as the average in all the courses or each course yeah all the courses so it's the average right yeah okay and so you need also to get into the engineering program what's the what's the requirement 80 percent and so get into engineering program that was like 80 percent in science subjects okay and oh, okay before we move on let us show you this awesome drone that this this guy owns here that's a dji mavic mini that's really cool drone let me show you from inside so that's the drone we got like it has like 2.7k three axis gimbal camera which will let you make like really cool videos in high quality in 60 frames and the cool thing about this combo pack is like you get like three batteries wow. so each battery will give you like uh, 25 minutes flight time that's so pretty good. you have like uh, 120 minutes of flight time so that's pretty good so really i'm happy good. with my purchase so if you want to buy this without the combo pack you will save 100 bucks but you you're not gonna get the battery charger and the two batteries so it's really good purchase so i have so i have the remote which you can charge uh, with your normal USB Type 3. So you need to charge this remote, batteries, and then you're good to go. So let's see how this awesome flight is gonna actually be in the air and how it flies. So the beast is ready now to take off. So this is how the setup looks like. I don't know if you can see it. But you guys ready? I'm nervous. Let's go. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up because YouTube will actually start to promote the video to other students just like yourself and also put your thoughts in the comments below and share this video so that everyone can get help and secure their work done. So now what we're trying to do is capture ourselves uh, with the camera here. The camera here is really good. Uh, what's the camera again? 2 point? That's 2.7K. 2.7K guys, oh my god. 60 FPS. 60 FPS. Let's get that going. We touch, we break, make it seem like we feel the same. We love what we hate. The drone is lost in the air. The UFO is flying somewhere around. <laughs> Where is it? It's lost. Oh man, the drone is gone. <laughs> so, so this is the view of the camera here. But we don't know. We can't see the drone. I can't see the drone. Where is it? The drone's gone. But it's somewhere in the air, so it's still. So let me bring here. So now he's bringing it back somehow, let's see. There! And he's not even controlling it, he's not even controlling it. Oh my god, look at that. Where is it gone again? I can hear it. Okay, there it is, there it is. Look at the guy, oh my god. Okay, we're gonna land the bird on the hand now. Very carefully. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Oh man, this is good, bro.
So once you have satisfied all the requirements, you can put together the application and apply to the co-op program at your university. At MUN, you need to apply four months before the semester that you intend to start working. So for example, if you intend to do your work term in fall 2020, then you need to apply four months beforehand. Now, if you do get accepted, then this four months you are going to spend looking for your job. So for finding a job, let's face the hard truth. Uh, you're going to have to apply to hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And in the end, you're probably going to get only a few interviews, like five to six interviews. And then you're going to get one or two offers. Customize your resume and cover letter tailor it to every job and then keep applying. It's going to be a lot of hard work, but in the end, it's going to be worth it. I promise you, it's definitely going to be worth it. Let me tell you about my experience like of getting first work. And it was really hard. Like I have made like about 150 cover letters and oh applied to all the jobs, like literally all the jobs that was on the co-op posting uh, portal. I've applied to all the jobs. I thought, let's see what's going to happen. I tried really hard, like on the last day of the exam, I got a call uh, for the interview and then I went over there and they said, okay, you're good to go. <laughs> you're hard. You're hard. What company was that? That was like Mun Technical Services. Oh, it was at Mun so, itself. Yeah, it was all about like technical stuff. Especially during this pandemic, you're going to have to step up your game and every day sit down to apply. There are so many uh, platforms where you can apply, for example, LinkedIn, Indeed, and you can also directly apply on the company's website. Now, Mun also gives you a portal to apply on where you can directly apply uh, to Mun and they will give over the applications to the employers. Now, these employers are local employers and they look to hire Mun students. So everything is available to you. All you have to do is work hard and make sure to apply to every single job that you can. Yeah, that's what I have done. Like I have applied to all the jobs. Some people are like picky. They just pick like some specific job and they don't get work time at the end. So that's what I have learned. Like never ever give up. Keep applying till the end of your exams, till the end of your study term. Apply, apply, apply. And finally you will get there. I was supposed to start my work term this spring. That means right now at Wood Group. But that got cancelled because of the pandemic. So I'm not sitting still, however, I'm continuously working on my side projects and I'm also in my free time doing this YouTube channel and making some informational content for you guys. And for computer science, if you're coming here for computer science, then it is really competitive and difficult now to get into uh, the co-op program. So here's some tips and tricks that you can apply to get into the program. So guys, my first tip will be to work really hard in your studies in order to get good grades but also do some part-time work in order to make some money and also get some experience so that you can polish your resume. And I will also recommend you to be involved with uh, organizations for volunteering. So get some experience from there too. Yeah, that's really good. I've said this before, but I want to stress the importance on it. Make sure you do projects, make simple projects. This project does not have to be a top-notch level. It doesn't have to be super unique. You can get a lot of ideas from the internet. Now, the fact that you've done your project will establish your skills. And also, it's going to demonstrate your willingness to self-learn. In Canada, self-learning is valued a lot. Your employer would want to know what you do in your free time. And instead of telling them, you can show them by talking about your projects. So after polishing your resume, you need to work on cover letters. So in the cover letters, you need to explain everything why you need that job. First, let yourself know that you are qualified for the job. So you need to write in your own words. Don't just copy paste other cover letters, write in your own words. Yeah. And after getting called for the interview, you need to get some practice, get to know the company, research a bit what the company does and why you are really interested in that company. Okay, and then record yourself answering some basic questions to get prepared for the interview and then go ahead and rock the interview. Let's sing a song full of hope, full of pain. Why don't you sing along, my friend? For it's our last refrain. Nice one. Forever young, ever strong, ever brave. Memories like that's good enough. You have done it, Jinesh. You have done it. Finally, now you got the license. So we just finished filming and that's it for this video. But thanks guys so much for watching. And on this hot day, we got some nice cold drinks as well to drink. But guys, make sure you check out this guy's video. He's a YouTuber as well here in St. John's. His channel's name is Breathtaking Canada. Breathtaking Canada, I repeat. 
and this link is also in the description make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos like this and also put your thoughts in the comments guys thanks for watching it's been fun talk to you later